name is Joni Polka. I live in Frankfort, Illinois. I'm here today to tell you my family's story and why we must all make our elected officials know that we, the people of Illinois, urgently need change now. Our story started a year ago yesterday. My dad, Cy Strezzo, a strong, active, young, 58-year-old man that had always lived a healthy lifestyle, never smoking or drinking alcohol, was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. We had consultations with his doctors, and they all seemed confident that he could possibly beat it, but at the very least control the cancer. We were told that aggressive chemo with radiation would do the trick, followed by surgery and an extra chemo just for good measure. We were all hopeful, most of all my dad. We were ready for my dad's fight. He was gearing up for the chemo and radiation, and we were ready to be by his side, night and day. For help and support. Sorry, that's all. Imagine our horror when we found out from his doctor that his private insurance company, Unicare, had stepped in and told the oncologist to find a different chemo. They would not allow my dad to receive the aggressive, aggressive chemo he so desperately needed. We continued on with the less effective chemo rather than waste valuable time. It didn't work. Chemo treatment did not contain the cancer, and by October 2007, we learned that the cancer had spread to my dad's liver. The oncologist told us not to give up. With the aggressive chemo, he could contain the cancer. By now, you care had seen firsthand that the, when they stepped in and changed the doctor's treatment, it was detrimental. My dad's oncologist, oncologist scheduled the treatment right away. The night before the first treatment was to start, Unicare once again called the oncologist and said they still would not allow my dad to have his chemo. The official reason was, and I quote, it was experimental. The doctor called me that night and gave me the news. I was told that the oncologist himself was on the phone with Unicare for hours, pleading to give my dad the medical treatment he needed. He told me that this was unbelie unbelievable because even Medicare covers this chemo. Somebody sitting at a desk without any, med any degrees of medicine decided that night that my dad was to be denied common everyday treatments. The minute I got off the phone with the oncologist, I went to the FDA website. The so-called experimental chemo had been FDA approved in 1996. This was not experimental. It was modern day medically proven treatment. I immediately appealed Unicare's denial in writing. I checked every day on the status of my appeal and each day I was told, and I quote, there is no appeal scan in our system yet. This went on for two weeks. After two weeks, I was frantic. I felt that Unicare had backed me into a corner and dangled my dad's life above me. I finally contacted every elected official I could vote for and every news media outlet. One of the locals, local papers featured a front page article. That was when State Representative Mary Flowers stepped in. Between her help, the Attorney General's office and the press applying pressure, Unicare finally allowed my dad's medicine. It took a month, a month that meant life or death, a month my dad could not waste. The night before the chemo was to start, we had to call 911. We found out later in the evening that the cancer, that time after time could have been contained, had now spread to his brain. This was December. By February of 2008, my dad needed hospice. And five days before Easter Sunday, Unicare called me again. This time, they decided that my dad should no longer be eligible for hospice. As my dad lay dying, Unicare was denying. We lost my dad on Easter Sunday. My dad was the most amazing father and grandfather. He was a man that built his life on family and helping others. He loved to be the man that everybody went to whenever they needed anything. He would see people down on their luck with no questions asked, thank you. And he'd hand them a $20 bill. His life mattered. My dad had the, the most contagious laugh and he was the life of the party and his smile would make anything all better. He won't be here to celebrate his 37th anniversary with my mom and he won't walk, walk my little sister down the aisle or rock my little brother's baby to sleep. He won't be here to cheer my son on as he makes a touchdown, and he won't be here to attend grandparents' day at my daughter's school. My dad, my hero, is not here for me to hug. 
and you didn't care, made sure of it. My dad paid his $2,400 a dollar a month premiums every month. He held up his part of the deal. Unicare decided a year ago that they would continue to cash that check, but they did not insure my dad. They dictated the treatment or lack of treatment my dad was going to have. They knew if they delayed and denied that my dad would wind up in hospice because it was more cost efficient. Then when he finally did wind up in hospice, they denied that. They tried to deny my dad from dying in peace without pain. Not only did Unicare take my dad's life, they tried to make him suffer until the very end. My dad's fight lives on in me and you. He had, been, had he been eligible for Medicare, he would have received the treatments and he would be here today. We need to be aware that we already have a universal healthcare system in place and it works. It's called Medicare. We usually don't realize just how much we need insurance until it's too late. We all deserve to be treated when we are sick. Private insurance forced my dad to receive substandard health care. The only thing Unicare did was increase their profit margin. They did not insure my dad. We need to contact all of our state representatives and senators and let them know that we are not profits, we are people. We deserve medicine when we are sick. This is America, not a third world country. We need to make sure our leaders pass House Bill 311 now before any more lives are lost. Thank you. Now, the part that really upset me the most when I read the article, Jody Poker, one of Mr. Stressful's daughters, said that she received a call from Unicare saying that they will cover the cost of two drugs. The insurance company made the medical decision that they would cover the cost of two, not make just pay for what the doctor said that was medically necessary, which they said was experimental, and come to find out it was not true, it wasn't experimental. They made the decision without ever sending anyone to his bedside to make the diagnosis for him. This insurance company, like others, was practicing medicine without a license to do so. You try it, you try it, and you try it, and see what happens to you. But for some reason, this insurance company can do so. Jody told you how, as a result of their delaying, delaying and denying his health care, caused his health to further diminish while they were going through the appeal process. What she didn't tell you is that she got another call from you again. And basically, the other call said to Jody and her family that if your father doesn't die by next Wednesday, we're going to have to put him out. Put him out. Now, for those of you who are preparing for later on in life, thinking that you're going to pay for your long-term care, don't try it. Because you don't know what the health care cost is going to be in 210, 211, 215. So you can never be prepared for it. So I had to call the insurance company again and tell them, don't try it on my watch in my state. So he was allowed to die without being put out. But to know a working healthy man who played by all the rules, did what he was supposed to do, and when he was least able to take care of himself, if he didn't have a family like Jody, and how many people out there are dying or have died because they didn't have anyone like Jody to speak up on their behalf. As I often say, dead people don't talk.